Hello, my friends, and I am back for episode five of the She Finds Joy podcast. I have to tell you all, I'm upstairs in this little bonus room that we have above our garage, and I really do wish that you could see me. Um, we are reworking my office right now so that I have a place to do podcasting and a place to do my videos, but we found the sound quality to be the best in this bonus room up above the garage, and so I wish you could see me right now. I want you to picture me, Kim Strobel sitting on this little teeny tiny red round stool that sits up about a foot off the floor. It's kind of chilly in this room, so I have a blanket over me. And I have my two dogs, George and Sophie. If you don't know this about me yet, I'm a huge animal lover, like such a huge animal lover that we have rescued 110 dogs in the last 20 years. But that's another podcast and another episode. But two of my current three are literally laying on the bed next to me, staring at me like big goons as I record. So I am not in this fancy smancy place, but here's what I'm doing. I'm showing up for you all, right? So let's talk about today's podcast episode. By the way, I'm a little bit like squirrel off of up, so I will dart here and there and everywhere. It's just who I am. But I want to talk to you about, if you want to be happy, stop asking for permission. <sighs> This is a big one, ladies, a big, big, big one for women. So here's what I know. The most successful people have one thing in common. They don't ask for permission. Instead, they act. They take action. So I want you to think about this, and I'm going to do a little storytelling along the way, but I want you to think about what are your personal goals? What kinds of things do you want to achieve in life? What do you want out of life? Um, maybe some of you want to quit your job or start your own company because you feel like you're worth way more than your resume. Uh, maybe some of you want to train for a 5K or a half marathon. Maybe some of you want to take a girl's trip or hire a house cleaner or buy a new set of underwear, go back to college, attend a women's conference, enroll in a course, whatever it is. What I want us to rethink is, are we, quote, asking for permission to do these things? Asking for permission from our partner or our spouse? Because here's what I think. I think as women, we have been trained over the years that we have to get permission from the man of the household, permission to spend money, permission to enroll in the course, permission to attend the event. And I really want to caution us and change our mindset around this. You see, I've made a lot of decisions without Scott Strobel's permission. Now, don't get me wrong. The really big stuff we do have to talk about. Like if I'm going to go out and buy a new couch or I want to enroll in a big coaching program or hire a business coach or start my own business, obviously, I need to be courteous enough to have the conversation with him. But there is a difference between having a conversation and asking for permission. And as women, I want us to step out of the age old idea that you have to ask for permission. You are an adult. Probably you're a pretty trusted adult who's made some pretty good decisions. And what happens is, is we revert into that like childlike mind where we are actually asking for permission rather than stating what we want. And so here's some things that I did not ask for permission for. I did not ask my husband for permission to quit my curriculum director's job and start Strobel Education, which is my education consulting business. I did not then ask him for permission a year later to start my life coaching business, kimstrobel.com. I certainly didn't ask his permission to hire a house cleaner, right? Now, I'm not listing these decisions to brag about me. In fact, I'm sharing this to help you understand the difference between having a conversation about something that you want 
and asking for permission. Here's the deal. When I told my husband, I think this was probably back in July of 2015. So I, I knew for like three years that I had this amazing dream. And I think maybe even I knew way back when that I wanted to start my own business, but it felt really scary. I did not know anything about being in business or how to run a business. I certainly didn't know how to transition from being a teacher to a curriculum director to, oh, now I'm going to stop and not have this stable curriculum director's job and receive this paycheck every two weeks with this amazing insurance and I'm going to open my own business. Guys, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about how to do any of that. But what I did know is that this yearning continued to live inside of me for a really long time. And it got so strong and it got so loud that in July of 2015, I made a really strong statement to my husband, which was, I intend on starting my own business January 1st. I plan to give my two weeks notice in mid-December. But now listen, I didn't, I, I had conversation with him, right? Hey, I have this idea. I've decided that I want to do it. I would love your thoughts, your feedback, your concerns, because that would be crappy if I didn't bring my partner into this very important conversation, okay? But what I didn't do was ask him for permission to do so, because I'm a grown-up. I'm a pretty trusted grown-up. I have a pretty strong track record for making some good decisions. Sure, I've made some bad ones along the way, but I, I, I make better decisions than I make not good decisions. And so here's what happened. My husband, who grounds me in the biggest way, because I can be a bit of, a, of an extremist, right? I have this exuberant, big, large personality. I have this wild, free spirit about me. I am a risk taker and certainly not always logically thinking through things. And my husband brings a lot of that to me. But my husband is a super cautious guy. Um, I always say that Scott Strobel is most comfortable on his lily pad. Um, he worked at the same job at the Abbey Press for 29 years. He had no problem going to that job every single day for 29 years. Like that's the kind of man he is. And that's fine. But I'm not like that. I'm not wired like that. I, I, I jump around jobs. I mean, that's just who I am. I get bored and then I want to do something else. And then I get bored and I want to do something else. And so when I started telling him that, you know, I had been baiting him for a while, but when I really sat down and said, this is what I want to do, let me just tell you, he, he doesn't dig his heels in very often, but he really started to dig his heels in. He was like, what do you mean you want to quit this amazing curriculum director's job that you have where you get a nice paycheck every two weeks and we have amazing insurance and you think you can start your own business and where are you going to get the clients and how are people going to find out about you and what are you going to do if it doesn't work? And I just don't know that this is a strong decision. And so I listened and we had communication back and forth and I just continued to tell him that I really have thought this through and that I feel in the bones of my bones, in the heart of my heart, in that deep intuitive sense that I pay attention to, that this is how I am supposed to show up and serve people. And I will tell you, we continued the conversation for six months. And for six months, that poor man continued to try to derail me. Um, and I get it. He has a more cautious personality. He likes to stay safe versus take risk. Um, there's a whole money mindset behind his thinking in his brain, because we're going to talk about money mindsets in here, but he has more of a scarcity mindset at times where it's like, let's, let's make super cautious decisions and let's not get ourselves into trouble. Um, and so all of his kind of baggage, so to speak, his money mindset story was coming to the surface and it was really trying to pull me back. He was trying to say, I don't think you should do this. I don't think this is the best decision. And as I continue to say, oh, I'm doing this. He was then like, and I said, I'm doing it January 1st. He was like, I think, you know, then he came back with, I think you need to wait. I think we need to think about it longer. I think you need to make, wait until June 1st. Well, here's the deal. I finally said, look, Scott Strobel, I'm doing this. I'm a 42-year-old woman. I feel like I'm making a strong decision. I really need you behind me 
because I'm going to be much more successful if I have my man behind me on this. But you've got some mindset work to do and you need to get yourself into some counseling. And let me just tell you, kudos to him because that's what he did. He started seeing our amazing counselor who has been in our life for 20 years and our good friend and counselor, Charlie, got my husband to understand that his wife has every right to make this decision. And not only that, she's probably going to do it and do it really well. And I tell you all this because as women, we ask for permission all of the time. We need to change the conversation we have around that. You can approach your spouse and say, look, I'm really overwhelmed. I really despise being in charge of the housework. I'm exhausted after working all day and coordinating the kids and getting them to practice. And I really don't want to spend my Friday night cleaning the house. Can we please consider hiring a housekeeper? Okay. Let me just tell you, that's asking for permission. You need to change the can we to stating your point. I really want to hire a house cleaner. I feel very strongly about this. I would love to know your thoughts, your feelings, and for us to really hear one another out. Do you see the difference between the asking for permission and the just inviting into the conversation? Now, I think that there is a big difference between discussion and permission. And if you feel like you have to ask your spouse for permission well, this implies that you can't be trusted to make a good decision by yourself. And I'm just not going to get on board with that. I'm going to tell us, put our big curl panties on, act like the adults that we are. We are not six-year-olds or 12-year-olds or 15-year-olds who have to ask for permission. And I don't care if your spouse makes more money than you. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. That does not mean that you have less value in the decision-making process. And I want to tell you that I see women do this all of the time, especially with finances. They have to get permission to spend money. And it's this old paradigm handed down from a generation where the man made all the darn decisions. I mean, have you ever heard a woman say, because I hear this all the time, right? When, when people are enrolling in my course or, and I get it, like some of my courses are high-end courses and yes, you definitely need to have a conversation with your spouse over it. But I hear women say all of the time, well, I don't know if I can go and enroll in that course, let me ask my husband first. Or, hey, I'll be to check with my spouse first to see if they think it's okay if I go on this girlfriend trip. Or I need to check with my family to see if I can attend this networking event since I'm always the one who puts the kids to bed. Okay, here's my tough love. Let's get real honest here. If your husband wants to spend money on something he wants, I'll bet most of them don't bat an eye and they certainly don't come asking you for your permission. Not only that, but let's just take this conversation. Let's say that your husband's buddy reaches out and says, hey, I got these NCAA basketball seats, third roll, Las Vegas, March 6th through the 7th. I need to know within the next five minutes, are you in? Can you go? I'm going to bet your husband will be like, yep, sign me up. I'm there. I'll make it work. But as women, we don't do that, right? We don't take the plunge. We actually go and ask permission and we make sure that the spouse is okay and not going to get their panties in a wad over us going. And that is the conversation that needs to happen. And that's how we need to change the trajectory, trajectory of going forward. Because again, we can have discussion, we can have conversation around this, but you don't need to ask for permission, ladies. Look, I get it, right? And, and, and I'm not just talking about your spouse. I mean, sometimes we have to get permission from our parents or we let our friends and our family and the people around us derail us 
from going after our dreams, right? Or, or whatever it is. I'll give you another example because I teach through storytelling and through stories of my own life. But this past May, my husband and I, we take a seven day only adult vacation every single year. We've done it since the kids were little. We feel like it is a super important part of our marriage. And so every year in May, we go away for seven days of basically eating, sleeping, drinking, enjoying each other, doing lots of fun stuff together for seven days. And it is one of the best weeks of our life. Now, I have this amazing, super loving, super supportive mom who no matter what, she will always be there for her kids. But, but let me just tell you, when I told her in May, hey, yeah, you know, we're going to be gone this week for our seven day trip like we go on every year. And she gave me this look and she was like, oh, you're going to miss two of Spencer's golf matches. It's his senior year. And it was this whole like, and I thought to myself, like I got in, internally, I was ticked, right? I was like, oh yeah, well, first of all, let me give up a seven day trip that is super important in my marriage so that I can go walk around the golf course. I'm not trying to be mean here, but like, you know, walk around the golf course for nine holes and um, I'm going to, yeah, no, that's not happening. Like I'm going to miss the two golf match. That's a golf matches. That's a decision I'm making so that I can have this one week with my husband. And once I kind of explained it to her, she got it right. But she's living in that mentality of, first of all, everyone comes before you, everyone comes before your marriage, every, you know, right. That's, that's how she was raised. And, and that's the generation of women who show up in that way. And I also had to think like, I'm not looking for your permission here, right, mom, I'm not asking your permission. If it's okay, if I go on this trip, I'm just telling you I'm going on the trip. Um, now granted, I didn't want the feelings of guilt that came with it from her and all of that. And like I said, once I explained it, she was like, oh, okay. You know, she reverted back to her way of doing things, which is no matter what, your kids always come first over and over and over again, but we're not even going to go down that alley because we know how that turned out. But, um, my point of this story is, do we either, you know, predominantly ask for permission to do things, or even are we sometimes passively aggressively asking for permission? So let me give you a couple more examples. I want you to think about when you have an idea and you immediately get shut down by your family members or the friends in your life, right? They'll say things like, Chelsea, please think through this. You know, I don't know that you have the experience to do this. I don't know that you have the time to do this. It feels super risky to do this, to get out of your job security. You're not, you're not going to have health insurance or you're not going to be able to take care of your family. And here's what we need to understand is that not everybody gets to have an opinion on what we decide we want to do with our life, right? Like not everybody shares my view of the world, my perception of it. Not everybody shares how I decide I want to show up into the world, even if it does mean that I might fall on my face. However, I know for me that by sticking to my gut, right, of what I wanted, that I was able to overcome the naysayers and choose the life that I wanted and that I don't have to ask for permission to chase after any of my dreams. Even if it is, I want to buy a new pair of shoes or I want a new pair of underwear or I want a new set of pajamas. I don't have to ask for permission. Now, ladies, it's just simply time for us to reframe and start asking for or telling telling what we want. All right. So we got to shift this craziness because I get it in a lot of households, the power dynamic is still stuck in the 1950s. And, you know, some may claim that women asking for their spouse's permission is just common courtesy. I'm here to tell you, I don't think it is. It's not just about finances either. I'm not just talking about permission to buy something or enroll in a course or go back to college. I think that women are super hesitant to tell their partners what they need emotionally physically, sexually, they're hesitant to make themselves a priority 
all right? Maybe they want regular time with their husband or a date night or a seven day trip once a year, but they're afraid to ask for it. Maybe they want more time with their girlfriends. Maybe they want time to not be a wife and a mother, to just be who they were before those roles for, you know, one hour a day or one, two hour spot a week. Like you are allowed to go after that for which you want and need. Maybe you decide I'm going to treat myself to a massage every single month. You're not going to ask for permission to do that. You don't need permission to go get, or you are an adult. You don't need permission to be able to do that. Um, and so I want you to really think about how can you love yourself enough to make this shift in your life? How can you change how you have conversations with your spouse so that you're not acting out of an asking for permission mentality, all right? Because I believe if you want to grow, if you want to be happy, if you want to live an exceptional life, we have to kind of get over this crazy martyrdom. We have to remind ourselves, hey, I make good decisions. I'm allowed to go after what I need more of in my life. And I don't have to compare it to someone else. I don't care that someone else doesn't need one hour of exercise a day and a massage every Friday like I get. I don't care if people say I'm high maintenance compared to what they need. It doesn't matter. All I know is what I need to live my best life and to show up as the very best version of myself. And so you don't need anyone else's permission to live life on your terms. I'm asking you to be that woman. I'm asking you to be the woman who has the courage to ask for what she wants and the one who's willing to give it to herself. The one that knows that she matters because we are here to give our best to the world, right? We want to show up as that very best version of ourselves. So we have to stop asking for per permission. We have to start taking steps in the directions of our dreams because the only way to figure out the steps necessary is to start with one single step. And let me just tell you, this is not going to be easy. The first time you have to have the difficult conversation, your partner is going to feel rubbed the wrong way. They're, maybe they're used to you coming to them and getting permission and getting the little check mark like, yes, you can go out and do this. Here's the deal. You need to change and step into your power as an equal partner in that marriage or in that partnership. And it's going to feel weird and you're going to get some resistance from your partner at first if they're not used to it. But what I'm telling you is it's worth it. It's worth it for you to stand back in your authentic power as the powerful woman that you are. It's worth it to learn to have the difficult conversations and to tell what you want out of this life without asking for permission. You are allowed to chase after whatever the dream is. You are allowed to go after that whichever you want to incorporate in your life because you matter. You matter as a woman who continues to level up and rise up in your life. So I want you to really rethink this. Don't ask for permission. Of course, be kind enough to have the conversation if it's a big ticket item because your partner's input does matter. But be really leery of how in your own life you ask for permission. And instead, I want you to initiate discussion by stating very clearly what it is that you do want.